familiar tongue twister, she sells seashells on the seashore, has made seashells a familiar object for many of us. Seashells have always held a fascination and no holiday trip to the coast is complete without acquiring some shells. The Marie Sanga Lana Purlon, the Kalatal Alia, the Makal Tangalo, the Vidilla, Alangar Purlao, Perivial Gift to Pondraga, Wine to Poranga, the Marnare Kadalari, the Maripurle, the Yavar Matadrugo, is the Angloda Toli. Each shell is very different. I mean, they all are unique in themselves. Uh, different people have different perception and different meaning for shells. For my granny, my grandmom, shell means. You know, they do the puja and the sound which comes from the shell is again very, very having a lot of positive energy. Makes your, again the sound which we can hear at the back. So that makes the home very pure. So that is something which is coming from our ancestors and we all believe in that. Now coming to the beauty and the creativity part, all of us can, of course love it. The foreigners, the tourists who come here, they love that. They can use it in so many things like jewellery, the mirrors and it is so much, it's all your creativity. When it's in the house, it's not in the house, it's in the house, it's in the house. It's in the house of Vishnu Ji. We are from Tibura, for going to the house. And the thing we get, this thing, Buriya Ji, I'm going to take it to the house. Yes, I'm going to take it to the house of God. Everybody has a different reason, but in the end, shells acquire a place in our memorabilia, either as a religious means to evoke God, or as curios on our shelves. Many of us don't even relate with them as living creatures. Shells can be said to be the homes of mollusks, soft-bodied, symmetrical animals. The calcareous shell around their body is formed by a secretion in their body wall. In India, there are about 3,500 varieties of mollusks belonging to 290 families. India has a long coastline of over 7,500 kilometers along with two major island groups. It has an abundance of marine diversity. Shells or mollusks are generally found in the shallow areas and in the coral reefs. They play a crucial role in the ecosystem as food and as seabed scavengers and burrowers which helps in the nutrient cycling, thus helping in maintaining the ecological balance. In a way they keep the system clean. And they are in large number actually. We, you may not see them once you go into a, like a coral reef ecosystem where they are normally most associated or along the coasts. So you will see these shells in large number which will be feeding on the, on the surface of a rock uh, or on an algae or basically going over the sandy bottom and then eating whatever food is available over there. Shells and dead coral washed out from the sea play a major role in the formation of beaches. This natural phenomena has also led to the practice of beachcombers collecting shells from the seashore.
Mollusks are also an important source of food in the coastal region. But it is the shell or the home of the animal which holds much fascination. In Kanyakumari itself, a variety of handicrafts can be seen. Functioning as a cottage industry, colourful shells are crafted into mirrors, wall hangings, garlands and curios. The industry provides employment to women and allows them to work from their homes. நான் <laughs> Yavari on the Madra Pakan, Kampan, the Eni Podi, Ilandu, the Edripe, Vadila Sales Verni, the Vandranga. Either Nambinanga Palakudumangalande, Valni Dragra. The cottage industry largely uses the smaller variety of shells, which are the bycatch from large scale trawler fishing or collections by beach combers. The shells are boiled to destroy the mollusk inside and cleaned with acid to highlight their natural radiance. All shells used are permissible under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and this cottage industry finds immense sale during the tourist season. देखो अभी सीशल में अभी हम लोग को जो आइटम बनाता है ये किधर है होली प्लेस में बिक्री होता है टूरिस्ट प्लेस में बिक्री होता है अपना इंडिया के अंदर पीछे ये क्राफ्ट वर्क अभी नया नया बनाते रहेगा पर पुराना आइटम कोई ग्राहक लोग पसंद नहीं करेगा इसके लिए वो नया नया डिजाइन बनाते रहेगा तभी अपने भी काम चलेगा और कारागिरी भी काम मिलता है किधर किधर फिशिंग होता है उधर सारा जगह पे शेल निकलता है लेकिन हर हर जगह पे हर हर वैराइटीज अलग-अलग वैराइटीज निकलता है अभी साउथ इंडिया में देगा तो बहुत आइटम वैराइटीज आता है साउथ इंडिया में अभी आपको तमिलनाडु में बोलेगा तो रामेश्वरम किलाकरे में तिरुचंदूर में तूतुगुड़ी में कडलूर चेन्नई कन्याकुमारी अभी जिधर जास्ती मिलता है उधर से हम लोग लारी भर के लेके आता है However, in many cases, the large shell factories move away from being centers for simple handicrafts. In spite of all claims that shells are the bycatch of fishing or collections of beach combers, the abundance of supply makes it look far bigger than the cottage industry. The factory smells of decay and thousands of mollusks are destroyed to create pretty artifacts. In the battle between livelihood and wanton killing, livelihood survives. In this world also survives the destructive world of illegal wildlife trade. The permissible is allowed to mix with the non-permissible to fetch a high price in the international market. The 
shops which line the banks of Kanyakumari sell many of the banned varieties of shells, shells considered to be protected under the Wildlife Protection Act. The king shell or the hornet helmet is a shell listed as endangered under Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. It is commonly sited on the stands in Kanyakumari. Harvested from the Gulf of Manar, whole shells are sold as souvenirs. The giant clam is another highly endangered species found in the coral reefs of Andaman and Nicobar and the Lakshwadeep Islands. Strict vigilance has stopped the open trade of this species, but an undercover operation can also lead to sighting the trade of this beautiful shell. Spider conches are beautiful attractive shells and even though banned are freely sold in the shops of Kanyakumari. In most shell factories, one can often cite the cleaning and polishing of these shells. Trochus, with its pearl color, is another endangered shell in the illegal trade. But its quality and structure allows it to be used extensively in artifacts. It has a thick mother of pearl interior, which is popularly used in making jewelry. The shell is cut into various shapes and sizes, and its use often remains a well guarded secret. <laughs> इसमें हम लोग कटिंग करेगा कटिंग करने से इसमें आपको चिड़िया जैसा आप देखा ये ये सो पीस आइटम बनाता है ये नेचुरल संग भी बन सकता है यहां ऊपर का काट देगा ये संग बनेगा दो आइटम बन गया फिर इसको सो पीस भी रख सकता पेपर वेट और ज्वेलरी आइटम से भी इसमें बनेगा इसमें 10 20 आइटम इसमें से निकलेगा द ट्राइपीजियम कॉन्च इज ओपनली सोल्ड एंड वन कैन ऑफन साइट द क्लीनिंग एंड पॉलिशिंग ऑफ दीस शेल्स in the open market. Most sellers themselves seem unaware that the shell is banned. The green turban shell, chambered nautilus and many other which are identified as protected under the Wildlife Protection Act find a place in this invisible but illegal trade. The ministry had uh, in 2001 uh, issued the circular putting 24 species of seashells in the schedules of the Wildlife Protection Act. Out of 24, 9 are in schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act meaning thereby they were given the highest degree of protection to these nine species of uh, seashells and remaining 14, 15 are in the schedule 4 of the Wildlife Protection Act. What we have realized, what most of the enforcement agencies in the states have realized is that people are not really aware of the species of seashells which are permitted and which are banned. So all the uh, photographs of all the banned species of seashells have been put in the airports and seaports so that people are aware that these are the items which are uh, not permitted and we have gradually realized that the, uh, the, the number of seashells, I mean this awareness campaign has uh, been quite effective because in many sta coastal states we have found that the number of uh, shops uh, which were selling seashells have come down drastically. And as, um, as, as and when the enforcement agencies or the wildlife officials catch these uh, items which are not permitted, the action is taken as per law. Along with protected species, there are a certain species of shells which today carry the threat of over-harvesting. The sacred chank or the divine conch is one such shell. The chank is a very popular shell and is part of many religious practices. 
a very heavily traded commodity in all religious sites like Somnath and Puri, its religious significance prevents the imposition of restriction. हम लोग को धर्म में तो संघ को बहुत पवित्र माना जाता है और शादी में हम लोग को संघ का बाला भी पहनाया जाता है तो ये पूजा के लिए हम एक बड़ा भी लिए तीन हजार में और ये छोटा दोनों लिए भगवान का आसन में आरती जब करते हैं पंडित जी तो इसका जरूरी होता है हाथ में हम लोग को कंपलसरी है जैसे सिंदूर कंपलसरी है वैसे ये शंख भी पहनना एकदम कंपलसरी है इसके बिना हम लोग को मैरिज नहीं होगा ये शाखा कहा जाता है शाखा कहा जाता है इस बाला को शाखा कहा जाता है ये इससे जो है परंपरा है कि इससे आवाज होती है आवाज से जो है दूषित वातावरण निकलता है और इसकी ध्वनि से आदमी का ध्यान केंद्रित होता है in spite of recommendation by MPEDA, the Marine Product Export Development Authority, that small chunks should not be collected and that harvesting should be reduced by 30%, over-harvesting continues to be a major problem. Traditions, customs and beliefs seem to combine all over India when it comes to the sacred chank. The sacred chank is perhaps one of the only variety of shells which is not a bycatch but is collected by specialized skin divers. The Gulf of Manar area in Tamil Nadu, famous for its specialized fishing practices, has a community of fishermen who only dive for chanks. A well-established network ensures that the chanks are immediately sorted and transported to other states, with Kolkata being a major source of demand. Kolkata, a city whose bylanes and lanes reflect two worlds, the modern and the traditional. It is a continuous demand for shakha or shell bangles which attract a large supply of chanks to the city. Shops in old Kolkata sell a variety of bangles and the reasons for wearing them vary from traditional myths to medical requirement to just simple patriarchal norms. <laughs> शंकर भगवान ने दुर्गा माई को शंखाचूरी पहनाया उसी से शुरू है शंखा पहनना शुरू ये क्या स्व का निशानी हो गया शंखा जिसको पहना दिया वो जनानी उसी का है एक्चुअली मैं औरत लोग का जो कैल्शियम का डिफिशेंसी है ये है एक्चुअल शंखा है प्योर कैल्शियम जो पहनने से जो पहनते हैं किसी किसी को जैसे मैंने हम लोग का माता जी चाहे दादी जी कोई पहनता है तो देखिएगा पूरा प्लेन हो जाता है पहनते पहनते वो क्या होता है सॉरी मैंने उसका जो बॉडी है एब्जॉर्ब करता है पहनने का मतलब उसका शादी हो गया और इसका साइंटिफिक जो कारण होता है वो बोलता है जो समंदर के चीज होता ना शरीर दिमाग ठंडा रहेगा The streets of old Kolkata are lined with craftsmen engaged in the cleaning, cutting and polishing of the chanks. The bangle making process itself indicates a chain of specialized craftsmen who have been trained through generations in their craft. The raw chanks are first collected from the supplier.
they are then cleaned through a laborious process to bring out its white radiance. Some chanks are polished and sold in their natural form. This also generates a new byproduct for the perfume industry, the cartilage. This is inside, this is the pattern. When it comes out, it starts to move. When it gets out, it stops. After the cleaning, it starts to clean it. After the cleaning, it starts to clean it. ये दो चीज में लगता है एक होता अगरबत्ती में देता है इसका स्मेल निकालने के लिए और एक होता मेडिसिन बनने के लिए इसका दम दो हजार ढाई हजार एक एक केजी देन स्टार्ट्स द इंट्रिकेट प्रोसेस ऑफ कटिंग द चैंक एंड कार्विंग द बैंगल अ ट्रेडिशनल आर्टवर्क इट हैज बीन ग्रेजुअली रिप्लेस्ड बाय मशीन्स स्मॉल Low pay symbolizes an industry which not only encourages superstition but also supports environmental destruction and inhumane labor situations. Many work for low pay and work because they know no other profession. पहले हाथ में करना था. अभी मशीन निकल गया पहले से अभी जो पैसा मिल रहा है पहले का जब पैसा मिला हाथ में मशीन से कम था लेकिन अच्छा था अभी जब मशीन निकल गया प्रोडक्शन ज़्यादा हो गया कि तो पैसा ऐसा नहीं मिल रहा है हम लोग को हम लोग का लेबल लेबल ही रह गया इन दीज बैंगल्स मिथ्स ट्रेडिशंस सेक्सिज्म एंड एनवायरमेंटल डिस्ट्रक्शन सरवाइव So uh, a quick assessment, scientific assessment uh, by, by the by recognized and competent uh, agencies, scientific agencies in the country done and then based on the findings, probably there may be a need to restrict the exploitation from the sea. But completely banning uh, will not be right, advisable for both the reasons, number one, uh, religious attachment and then banning all of the species without really based on uh, a good robust data has already created a lot of controversies in the past. Thus, the shell story in India is complex. Environmental destruction and livelihood survive together. Both issues which need interventions, but no easy solutions are possible. Perhaps some solutions may lie in culture of shells, in sustainable harvesting, and in providing alternative livelihoods. The, the one of the direct measure was bringing them some of the, these shells which are dwindling or have dwindled in, in, the, uh, in the wild by protecting them under the Wildlife Protection Act and uh, these shells have been brought into the purview of the Wildlife Protection Act. So their uh, collection or sale has been prohibited. Uh, the other is like creating national parks and sanctuaries. So protected areas create a system in which the entire ecosystem has been protected, like Gulf of Manar, Gulf of Kutch, in Andamans we have got Marine National Park. And uh, other thing is that looking into the breeding biology and all. So some of the commercially viable uh, important shells, if we can breed them artificially, and then culture can be done. The story of shells includes the shells which are endangered, the shell which adorns a curios, the shell which evokes the gods, the shells which keep our ecosystem clean. We need them all. But the dangers lie in over-harvesting, in moving the endangered species out of the protected lists, in buying of endangered shells as curios, in encouragement of myths and traditions. In some cases, the choice is in our hands. Maybe on your next visit to a coastal town, we don't touch an endangered shell. We don't wear a shell bangle to follow traditions. 
we don't blow the conch to invoke the gods a balance between supply and demand may allow sustainable harvesting thus allowing livelihood to survive as well as allow the ecosystem to rejuvenate itself